So case A, weak Zeeman effect. So what are our states here? We discovered that, and uh, we know those are the coupled basis states, and the states of H0 tilde, eigenstates, or uh, eigenstates, they're the approximate, approximate eigenstates, are the states N, L, J, M, J, and the energies were energies that depended on N and J. We had, so the one S one half, two S one half, two P uh, one half, and two P three halves. Roughly, to remind you of what happened, the original states were shifted, and we used the J quantum number in here. And, um, and those are our multiplets. Those are our multiplets, and we have a, a lot of degeneracy, as usual. So this is degeneracy here and degeneracy here, because a multiplet p three halves is j equal three halves, and uh, that's four states. Here you have two states, um, and here you have um, two states as well, so uh, quite a bit of states um, that are degenerate. So in principle, when we do the Zeeman splitting, we may have to consider the full matrix N, L, J, M, J, delta H, Zeeman, N, L prime, J, um, M prime, J. So what are our degeneracies? Our degeneracies are when uh, you have a given value of j. So the, the, a degenerate subspace can have different l's, for example here, but the same j, and therefore different mj's, or within a given j multiplet, it might have different mj's. So this is the scope of the degeneracy. And in principle, we may have to diagonalize a matrix like that by looking at the degenerate spaces. If you're doing the level two, you would have to discuss these four states here. You would have to discuss these other four states. Happily, we don't have to do that much because, as usual, uh, well, delta H Zeeman is proportional to LZ plus 2SZ. And this commutes with L squared, with delta H Zeeman. L squared commutes with any L operator. It certainly commutes with any S operator. They don't even talk to each other. And therefore, um, L squared commutes with L Zeeman, which means that when L is different from L prime, uh, this matrix element has to vanish. This is our remark from perturbation theory long, long ago. Uh, you have another operator for which the states have different eigenvalues, commutes with your perturbation. The matrix element of the perturbation must vanish between those states. So we don't have uh, eigenstates like that. And when L is equal to L prime already, so we focus on L equals to L prime. So uh, we only need to worry within multiplets. So you have N, L, J, M, J, delta H, Zeeman now, N, L, J, M, J prime. It's an issue of M, J prime now. But Zeeman thing, 
commutes with Jz. Jz commutes with delta H Z man. Jz is Lz plus Sz, and Z components in angular momentum, two identical components always commute, of course. Uh, so Jz commutes with delta H Z man. So this thing will vanish unless m is equal to m prime. And that's great, because you're back to non-degenerate perturbation theory. The whole matrix, this Zeeman thing could have turned out to be complicated matrices. No, it's perfectly diagonal in this basis. There's nothing to worry about here. Except that it's still not easy to compute, as we will see. So what, what do we need to compute? We'll have uh, the first order corrections due to Zeeman on the N, L, J, M, J basis is equal. Well, the Zeeman Hamiltonian had an E over 2 M, C. So let's put it there. E, let's put the B close to the... E to MC, and now we have to do N, L, J, M, J, L, Z plus 2, S, Z, N, L, J, M, M, J. Perfectly diagonal, and that's um, non-degenerate perturbation theory is going to give us all the energies we want, all the splittings we want. So basically, what's going to happen, as you can see here, is that uh, things don't mix. Everything is diagonal. So these two levels are going to split. These two levels are going to split. These four levels are going to split. Everything is going to split here. The remarkable thing of this formula, and it's going to keep us busy for about 10, 15 more minutes, is that this thing, this matrix element, is proportional to mj. So the state split proportional to the m quantum number. The state with m equal 3 halves will split three times as much as the state with m equal 1 half. And uh, that's not obvious here. It's a remarkable result. It, it's. Um, part of what's called the wigner eckhart theorem, something that you study in graduate quantum mechanics, but we're going to see a bit of it, the beginning of it, in this computation. And it's a fairly remarkable result. So the remarkable result here, remarkable, is that E1s are proportional to Mj. And that defines a linear splitting because it's linearly proportional to the magnitude of the magnetic field and divides the states nicely. So uh, we want to understand this matrix element. And there's a little thing we can do. Notice that LZ plus 2SZ is equal to JZ plus SZ. You can take one of the SZs and complete JZ. And you're left with that. So the matrix element N, L, J, M, L, Z plus 2, S, Z, N, L, J, M, J, is equal, if you have a J, Z, that gives you just something proportional to H, M, J. plus N, L, J, M, J, S, Z, N, L, J, M, J. So OK, a little bit of the mystery maybe uh, seems to you at least consistent here. I said this matrix element turns out to be proportional to M, J. And certainly, this piece having to do with um, the J component here uh, is proportional to MJ. The mystery that remains 
is why this matrix element would be proportional to mj.